table saws is within the compact range of 400, 500, 630 and 800. So anything from a, a fist size component up to say 1.4 meter swing will, will fit into this compact range. We have a vibration sensor in all the spindles on these machines so we, we, we can measure the, the harmonics and the vibrations through the cutting process. We can also measure whether a tool is running out of, um, out of true and it's got an imbalance because that's going to obviously affect the life of the spindle. Traditionally you would have had a, a fixture with manual clamping, people still do that sometimes today. Um, what's becoming more popular is automated clamping, so hydraulic clamps. We have 13 channels, up to 13 channels in the table, combination of hydraulics and pneumatics. It just makes everything easy. I mean, you, you get an operator's manual when you buy a machine, a couple of years down the road, it's been left in the office somewhere or lost or tipped in an oil drum and it's gone. Here we've got the, the data electronically stored with the machine. So firstly, it's the fundamental design, which is like a big bridge. So you've got your, your Z-axis guideways are set wide apart, which gives you a lot of stability. And alongside those, you've got direct measuring systems, twin ball screws to drive the system as well. So the B-axis is, is a single axis table that sits on top of the bridge. The, the, the fifth axis is a trunnion with, with two axes that sits on top of the bridge. Very heavy duty, rigid design. It is, and we've got a system we call Starrick Connect. And, and as I say, it, it's to make things easier for, for the user. So you can see it's simple pull down menus, taking you straight to tool magazine, unload, magazine loading, or the operating data, or the service, online tools. You're not gonna navigate through lots of different pages to find where you need to go. The way that the machine's constructed, the hydraulics, the electrics, the swarf system, everything's been made more compact. It's been designed so it fits around the machine better. I think when you buy a machine, you're probably bombarded with salesmen, with data sheets, with why our machine's great, blah, 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 blah. But these are important technologies and, you, and, and this is what makes a machine perform or not perform, depending on the the, uh, the performance data that, that's provided. To, to go to the utopia of automation, you're talking about maybe taking a cutting tool and grinding it, putting that tool into a, a tool holder and putting that tool holder into a, a feeder system, maybe a robot fed feeder system, into a gantry loaded system that takes tools to a machine. The machine knows the life of the tool and the life required for the production set of parts that, that, that's being fed to the machine so you're taking the tools into the machine you're taking tools out of the machine and regrinding them at the same time you're feeding components through a machine cell to various different machines you're loading those components you may be using robots to actually um, use a vision system to say this is the right part this is the fixture it goes on to, this is how we load it onto the fixture, this is how we send the fixture into the cell. So, you, so you, you're running a lot of parallel systems, at the same time you're measuring the condition of the machine to make sure each machine tool is production ready. We, we run an energy recovery system on these machines, so of course they chew juice, all machines chew juice. What we do here, we operate a system a bit like a formula on Kerr's system. We create energy as the machine's running. Typically on a machine this size, you can save as much as 10,000 euros per year on operating costs compared to a machine that doesn't have these systems. And there's a lot of systems within the machine that contribute to this. Uh, so in evaluation, if you were looking or talking to a...